Okay, hi oh guys. I'm going to do a quick video on the electrolysis tank now. This tank is not the first one I made. The first one I made was in a tiny little 2 litre ice cream tub, which is sitting up here on my workbench. And actually, the overflowing and the heat of it has now caused my laminate flooring, which is what this is, to bubble up right here. And that's what this is here as well, because it came up. But um, this is a Mach 2 version. I have got a drain plug here, which I don't actually use because it's so slow, and all the gunk which builds up in here, because I don't have a filter system or a cooling system yet, but I do have this radiator evaporator coil to turn into a cooling system. And I am planning on making a filter system out of that Coke bottle, believe it or not. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I need a high-pressure pump. I'm probably going to, I'm actually planning on getting a, like a car fuel pump which I'm going to try and use because they're pretty high pressure. I'm going to use one of them to pump the liquid out of here through the filter. But actually what I want to do is I want to have it in between the filter and the cooler so that the pump doesn't get any junk in it from this because this here, it get, uh, if you ever put, here's an experiment, get a 9 volt battery, put it into a thing of water, come back a day or two later, the positive side of the battery will be a weird greeny colour. This here does the same thing, but on a more extreme scale. And you get big, like, centimetre-sized chunks of it. Or maybe half a centimetre-sized chunks, it depends. And which form on the anodes and fall to the bottom. Let's give you quick basics on electrolysis. These are called sacrificial anodes. And your workpiece, which in this case is the Honda Shroud, is the anode. Uh, no cathode, sorry, a sacrificial anode and a cathode. These are called sacrificial anodes because they will rust through, they'll become really thin and basically electrolysis will destroy these and it strips off rust, paint and grease off anything like this. You will get rust on these and every now and again what you do is you find something you really don't care about, I think this is going to be the next thing I chuck in it, but connect, connect it to the clamp, convert it in the um, solution in there and you run it but with the power supply switched if you can hear the weird noise in the background which you might not be able to if I do this you might that noise believe it or not is my welder it's an 85 amp Clark gasless MIG welder is what I've connected up to the here I've just put two crocodile clips on the wires which come from it. Yes, I did have a little bit of a short out and this it's cooked this wire. But you know what? It's not it's not cooked enough that I need to replace it, it's still working, alright. I've tied the trigger down on the um welder. I've put two crocodile clip, clips on the welder and double it away. But I've put it on a very low setting because otherwise you put it on a high setting you and I'll disappear very quickly. Um, at the moment, this tank isn't the biggest, isn't as big as I want it to be, but for now it's good enough. Um, you have it, you start getting your tank so that it's some. Sh if I have a stupid size tank in here, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have any room to do anything else. It's such a small room, so this is suiting me for now. I put the Briggs um, pulley to the go kart in there. Which you know what I can't find. Where's it gone? I'll put that in there. I'm having a slight problem getting it onto the engine still. Um, and it only works by um, line of sight. So you have to have. I've got four anodes, one one on each um, side, because otherwise, if you just have one on one end, one on the other end, you can have blind spots. So it would only really work on both of these sides. The inside and the outside would still have the paint left on it. You have, and actually, the paint which is on the front of this, which would normally kind of be hereish on the engine, is actually facing towards the bottom. The chances are it might not get it, but it is at a slight angle, so the back anode might be able to strip it off. I'm not sure. If it doesn't, I have to put it in again on it. I'm going to have to put it in three more times yet, this, each time for probably about 12 hours. But it, this tank works extremely quickly with a weld connected to it anyway. Actually, it works. It works stupidly quickly. It shouldn't actually work that fast. It's it's going to make me get through a lot of these anodes, a lot more than what it should get through. I'm trying to find the pulley for the Briggs, but I cannot find it. 
that is actually <coughs> kind of pissing me off. There it is, it's right in front of me. Nice and shiny. There's still some rust in there. You know what? About box. Also, the second you take something out, dry it as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Because once you've taken all the kind of the rust which has done it before kind of protects any metal underneath it from rusting again. The second you take the rust off, any moisture on it, I mean, even the moisture in the air can make it rust very, very quickly. In fact, I did dry this, and except for that bit there, which apparently I've missed or I splashed it, then got it wet again. But you, the, around in places, you can still see rust on it. I'll show you what actually happens to these plates over time. Actually, I don't know where it is now. Oh, crap, it's raining. That's new. I didn't know it was raining. There it is. When I was talking about the um, sacrificial anodes need to be cleaned, what you do is you hang something else in the tank, which you don't really care about. You swap the polarity of the wires. So basically, these here are always live, and your workpiece is always neutral. That's always how it is if you want to strip something. But if, when you need to clean these, basically what you do, you put something else in there, and you run the polarity the other way, and whatever's in the middle becomes your sacrificial anode, and these become your cathodes, and it'll actually clean these for you. But when you do, this is what happens to your metal. That has been completely eaten away. It's just pitting in the metal. Been, this here, I left in there for 24 hours on a, I think it was actually it was on a low cycle, like what it is now. If I put it on a high cycle, this here would probably be pretty much gone. There, it's more or less eaten all the way through. But it is pretty much destroyed. Right here, you can see it's pretty much normal there because that's where the clamp was and it didn't have a um, line of sight from the anodes well from the anodes to the cathodes which was these at the time and it didn't do any pitting because this was in the way of course but that probably means this this here sometimes does get submerged in the tank which isn't too brilliant but sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to if you're doing small things like with the pulley, I had to do it with that. This is the spacer I did, but then forgot to dry it so it started to rust again, which goes over the top of the crank. Um, things like that, it has been submerged in the tank. You can kind of see the rust on it there. I'll do that. You can see the rust. It's got rust on it, anyway. Um, what else do you need to know? Never put your hands in the tank while it's running. If you have a cut, I mean, if you haven't got a cut, you're, you'll probably be fine. But if you have got a cut, you know when you put a 9 volt battery in your tongue? Imagine that, but through a cut in your finger, and it's actually quite painful. It won't hurt, it won't really hurt you, but it, it won't kill you, I should say. But it will hurt. And also those bubbles and that which form on the top, um, have I got a cut? No, I haven't. You see this orange foam shit which builds up on the top? Those bubbles are very, very flammable. <laughs> They're filled with hydrogen. They're hydrogen bubbles which build up on the top, so don't grind or do anything nearby. You do, you see all those orange bits up there? You, know, you probably can't see them, hang on. No, you still can't see them. Yeah. Oh, there you go, you can see one there. Um, yeah, you will set, you, it will, it won't kind of spontaneous catch fire, but what happens is they'll detonate, and there'll just be a slight area of them, it will just explode, and all that brown, red, rusty colour, sometimes greeny colour, sludge, will just kind of, and it will just explode everywhere. And you'll end up with those splodges everywhere. And they will make a pretty big bang, because it's hydrogen, of course. Um, that's about it. Running nine minutes. I've got a couple of videos to upload tonight. Sorry about the lack of videos, but every, not pretty much every single time I touch my phone to make a camera, um, to make a, what the fuck am I talking about? Every time I touch my phone to make a video, my battery dies, so pretty much all the time, I just can't be bothered. What I'll do later, I'll stick this Dr. Pepper can in there, just half sub submerge it, I'll maybe put a couple of nuts and bolts in the bottom of it just to steady it down, connect it up to that, and I'll show you what happens to one of these in an electrolysis tank. It's quite amusing. Very fun to play with once it's done. <laughs> Only because I'm sad enough to actually play with it once it's done, even though it does look absolutely fucking terrible.
Anyway, yeah, I stole this from school. There's some fridges out the back of the canteen where the compactor is. And I was around there. I just grabbed a pair of wire cutters and I undid the screws. <laughs> yeah, I'd use wire cutters because there's never any good tools up there. It was already nipped off because some fuckers nicked the compressors out of it, which I wanted to put on here. Not that it probably worked because they aren't high talk they aren't aren't high talk start compressors compressors, which is actually what I need for that. Fridge compressors probably wouldn't do the job, but oh well. Uh that's about it for now, and I'll see you guys later. Oh fuck, I ain't gonna see you guys later. <laughs> Bye guys.